All right, so we're going to start going over x-ray today. I want you to go ahead and open your book, the x-ray book that you have here. And what, what we do each week in this is there's going to be a certain number of pages each week that we cover. Uh, for example, the first week we go all the way up to page 40. Okay, page, well actually it's 39. That's there's, uh, every few pages in this book there's some review questions for you to do. Um, but what I have is I have also some notes that I gave you. And the, these kind of correspond with the most important stuff on those pages. So as we go over these notes, I'll point out certain pages here in the book to go over also. All right, for example, on page two, it starts talking about x-rays, all right? And um, anytime in this book when you see like a list of bullet points, like at the bottom of page three, that's the kind of stuff that you should start memorizing because that's the kind of stuff that you would see on the x-ray test to get your license. Now there's another part of this that we're going to be using also towards the back of the book. All right, there's also pictures in the back that show you how to do the different x-rays. So each week we'll also be going towards the back of the book when we go to the x-ray room to go over the different x-rays. So if you, if you take a look at the beginning on page 176, okay. So each week when we go to the x-ray room, We'll be going over some different x-rays that you're going to do. Each x-ray, it's going to show you a picture of how the x-ray should be set up. For example, if you're doing a, an x-ray of the hand, it's going to show you a picture, tell you to put the hand like this. Another one will tell you to put the hand like this. There's also a list of steps to follow, so that's how you use that part of the book. So in the syllabus that I'll give you, you'll see um, the pages that we're going over each week. All right, so we're going to start on the notes that I've given you here. Okay, on the first page, if you take a look at page one, there's a little bit in here. It, talk, it talks a little bit about atoms. Okay, and the reason why we have to talk about atoms is because x-rays, we're going to be producing x-rays in the x-ray machine, and they're all based on electrons. So if you remember uh, from a long time ago in chemistry class, you have an atom. What's in the, the middle of the atom? What do we call that? The nucleus. The nucleus. Okay. So here's the nucleus, and the nucleus has protons and neutrons. So I put a P for proton and an N for neutron. All right. On the towards the outside of the atom, you have electrons. So I put a little e for electrons. Now, um, each one has a charge. Okay, what is the charge on protons? Positive. So just put a plus sign next to positive. What about electrons? Negative. Okay. The neutron doesn't have any charge. So the reason why we look at this is because the electrons are what you're going to use in the x-ray machine to actually produce radiation. Okay, we're going to produce a, a beam of radiation that's going to come out of the machine, it's going to hit the patient, and that's made by these electrons, which we'll draw a picture of it later to see that. So you can kind of read over this first page. Uh, it's pretty basic, just telling you a little bit about the electrons, the atoms, things like that. All right, so what we're going to do is draw a picture of the x-ray machine, and it'll, tell, it'll, it'll show you how the electron. All right, up here is a picture, just a basic picture of an x-ray tube. This is the inside of the x-ray machine. You have a cathode and an anode. All right, the cathode has a negative charge. This has a positive charge. All right, so what you're going to be doing is you're going to heat up the x-ray tube. You're going to use electricity to heat it up. And when you heat this up, this little thing right here is going to produce electrons. Okay? This is the filament, this little, uh, 
it's like kind of like a wire. It's a coiled wire. It's called the filament. It's sort of like that filament in the bottom of your oven. You know, when you turn on your oven and that that wire down there gets really red to produce the heat. It's kind of like the same thing. All right. And when you heat it up, you're producing electrons. So we're going to put some little dots here, little red dots. All right, these are the electrons. All right, they just kind of like jump off of that, that metal coil, that filament. And they're just kind of floating in air as you heat it up. When you go to the x-ray control panel and you hit the button to actually take the x-ray, it causes these electrons to fly across and hit this right here. It's sort of like taking a tomato and throwing it against the wall. What's going to happen when you throw it against the wall? It's going right, to splatter. Okay. So that's what's happening in the x-ray tube. These electrons are going to fly across here really fast. They're going to hit this target and then there's going to be an explosion. And that explosion releases energy. That energy is the radiation, the x-ray beam. So then it comes down through here like this. And that's your x-ray beam. And these are electrons. that make sense? Okay. So once again, you heat this machine up with electricity. The filament gives off the electrons. And when you push the button to take the picture, they fly across, they hit the anode, and they explode. And that produces a beam of radiation. Now, the anode is also called the target because it's just like shooting an arrow at a target, that's where they hit the target. So anode or target is the same thing. So in the book, there's a description of that happening. On page five in the book, there's uh, three steps listed, and there's a picture there. So the picture's uh, similar to what I drew up here, but that's basically to help you understand what's happening in the x-ray tube. All right, let's take a look at a few other things here in this book before we go any further. On page three, it talks about the discovery of x-rays. So you have this guy, his name, uh, I'm not going to tell you how to say the name. Let's see if anybody knows how to say it, but I'll write it up here. His last name Does anybody know how to say that? Rontigen? That's, that's what I thought when I first saw it. This is how you say it. Rankin. It's pronounced Rankin. It's because it's German. So being German, the letters are not pronounced like we would think they are. So his name is Rankin. Okay. So always remember that. And on the top of page three, it says that William Conrad Rankin discovered x-rays November 8th, 1895. I would memorize that date. You'll definitely see that on test. November 8th, 1895, he discovered x-rays. And pretty much the way it happened is he, he had a lab in his basement of his house. He did a lot of different experiments. And he had this thing called a, a cathode ray tube, just a glass tube. With something, it's kind of like, a, like the beginning of the light bulb. He had this long glass tube with uh, these filament wires in there and he could apply le electricity to it and it would glow and he was just kind of playing around with it and he was also like an amateur photographer and he actually one day was playing around with the x-ray 